David is with us. David is in Louisville, Kentucky. Hi, David. How are you? I'm doing well, and uh, thanks for taking my call, Dave and George. I appreciate your guys' wisdom and opinion, so sure. uh, I'll try to be brief. Okay. And, um, uh, a little groundwork. I'm an over-the-road truck driver. Uh, I am out five days at a time, and I have rotating weekends. My wife works full-time, uh, I would say two full-time jobs. She also takes care of our kid all week while I'm gone. Um, so we have a 20 month old and we have a, a second baby boy coming in nine days. Wow. Um, so yeah, mama's got her hands full. Uh, um, I try to help while I'm there. Uh, and this job does have predictable schedules, uh, which really helped a lot, but here's what happened. Uh, a lot of relational stuff and, and a little financial thing, but I, I do wonder your thoughts on the financial thing. So when we put the second car seat in the, uh, she had a small SUV. I was the one who said, you know, this thing's a little tighter than it needs to be in here. Uh, for you having to pack them out in and out all day by yourself, um, we might look at some other options. So we talked about it. Could not agree on makes, models, anything. I'm looking at minivans. She's looking at SUVs. Um, we actually went and physically looked at some cars just to get some ideas, um, try to compromise on things. And there was a little compromise on cars, you know, different makes and models. Uh, and then we were trying to figure out what would be realistic in our range with the trade and all that. And uh, there were several, we both got a little uh, sticker uh, eyeballs there and then tried to back away from that. Um, and there were several talks about, you know, we're not going to finance anything different than where we are now to get into the vehicle we need to be. Uh, you know, a lateral move is fine, but we're not going to go backwards. Um, next thing I know, Saturday, she sends me pictures of this van that she just went and picked up and, uh, financed 10 grand. Um, we owed five as it was on a car and we had the money to pay it off. We were doing the stork mode thing. Um, and I don't know, I don't know if she just had a change of heart. We, we had a commitment conversation last night and we agreed there's a lot of, individual and relational counseling needed uh, to figure out how we even got to where we thought this was a good idea. My thought on the financial side is we turn right back around and sell that van and whatever the gap money is between the sell and paying off the loan, that's what we go by. Um, she seems to still think, I don't know at what level that this was a good idea and that we should keep it, uh, that it's just five grand further backwards um and that we can we can pay it off if we uh, buckle down so i'm curious what your thought is there wow um well i'm vacillating between this lady's completely overwhelmed with two little uh, babies she's pregnant and and the fact that she completely lost her dadgum mind and That's went again and, and, and went against everything in the relationship, lied to her husband and acted like she wasn't even married. Um, so I mean part of me is sympath sympathetic to where she is and how overwhelmed she is, and I get all of that, but part of me's really ticked at her right now. And I, I suppose and, and I suppose you're I probably ten X of both of those. Exactly. And and I do understand on the one hand, uh, not necessarily a but bigger vehicle is the right choice of vehicle. The loan is completely separate from that. Uh, well, and the des but this decision-making process that is completely exactly. out of control, yeah. you're not That's going to ever have anything financially until we solve whatever is broken there in her, uh, in, in her mind on how relationships work. Um, so I, I um, uh, uh, yeah, you, financially, what you need to do is sell the car, and you need to get a car that you can afford. Um, and also, that would probably be a good idea for her to do to recommit to your marriage, not necessarily to the Ramsey steps or something. You guys may decide together that you want to go deeply in debt. If you want to do that, that's fine. But whatever you, the the first thing that has to happen is you all have to get on the same page and agree to keep your word to each other. You just can't have a relationship where you just don't keep your word to each other or where you act independently, unilaterally of each other like this. 
There's there's just no data that says that creates a quality relationship. Yeah, the financial piece can be undone today, but the relational piece, the trust, that's going to take a while to build back up. And I think you're right that counseling is in order. And on the financial side, do you guys still have other types of debt outside of this car loan? Yeah. How much? Uh, how much? A, a little debt? bit. Yeah, they're working. Uh, we, they're working baby step we, too. We're close. We had, yeah, we had five grand left on the cars. This current car is now ten, so an additional five or six. Yeah. Um, she has a uh, seventeen thousand dollars student loan, which would have been the next thing we tackled, and then some petty collections that she has from old credit cards. Yeah. Uh, my we, guess we is, my guess is, your wife feels like that she's been running her life by herself already for a long time because you're just never there. And um, she feels abandoned, and she just had to do what she had to do as an abandoned single mom. I'm, I'm thinking that's where she is emotionally. You don't feel like that's yeah, where she I is, but I think that. that's where she thinks she is. I, I agree with that. That that that's probably pretty fair for how she feels emotionally. I guess yeah. my concern is, you know, and I, I've dug downplay that at all but uh, at least relationally and financially we agreed to be on the same page and then you went and did yeah i mean i I, i'm 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 livid of her breaking her word and and just doing this but i'm trying to figure out what level of distress she must have been in to do that because it sounds like you all had very clear conversations and then she just went and did whatever the flip she wanted to do anyway so which just tells me she's just in freak out mode I guess. I mean, because I, I don't, this lady does not sound like someone who is obstinate, arrogant. She doesn't sound like that person to me. She sounds more no, like somebody no, who no, feels, no. I think she's a cornered animal and she bit you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's how yeah, it feels. So yeah, you cool. got to get to the bottom of that before you can fix this van thing. The van problem is that is the symptom it's not the thing. So, and it, it may be, dude, you're coming off the road. and You got little babies, and she she's overwhelmed. And you may be coming off the road and doing something else so that you can be there for your family for a season. I don't know. But uh, I do know you need to sit down with the marriage counselor for sure. I'm not qualified to unravel all this. I can just, I can kind of get on her side for a minute, but there's no way to justify what she did on the other hand. So I can get on your side and be pissed about it too. I get it. I understand where your head is. But I'm trying to figure out what caused this so it doesn't happen again. That's the thing. Because if you don't break this, you're going to be broke your whole life. So, yeah, sit down with a good marriage counselor, my friend. So a couple days ago, George and I took a call from an over-the-road truck driver who's uh, he had been talking with his wife about trading cars. And uh, without talking to him, she went and traded cars and went further into debt. He was pretty irate about that um, because they didn't were not in agreement about that. And she just went and did whatever she wanted to do. And uh, we talked to him for a few minutes. As The more we talked to him, the more, if you go back and listen to the call, uh, the more we were questioning what's really going on. Because he's like, he set her up, threw her under the bus pretty much. And then we're like, yeah, I think you probably, you're over the road. You, she's pregnant. She's do, got a baby due in nine days. And you probably, there's something else going on here. You, you read you, between the lines. I actually said you may need to come off the road and take care of your family. And you guys need to get in marriage counseling. So um, she apparently was listening. Uh, or went back and listened to the call uh, and disagreed with a whole bunch of her, uh, the things her husband said about her uh, and the conclusions we came to about her as a result uh, and so forth. So sent us a long email. Uh, and, and so we thought it'd be fun to kind of go back through that because it's really interesting. So here's the deal. Um, well, let's just say, okay, I listened yesterday, got to hear the call you took from my husband regarding the purchase of a van, resulted of financing 10 k I know responding probably won't get airtime to resolve the plethora of issues you two seem to pick up on, but I felt at least I could provide some context for my actions that would hopefully lead to a rebranding of my sanity, because I said she may have lost her dad gum mine, and accountability for the situation. The truth is partially, as you put it, I was backed into a corner and I bit back. So it sounded like they couldn't come into agreement, and he's on the road, left her you know, stranded with a bunch of kids, and she just did whatever she wanted to do kind of thing. That was my point. And so... Um, then she goes on for about a page and a half explaining why it's okay to borrow money to buy a van and all this stuff, which, of course, is not true. Uh, my husband didn't mention that he's packed all of his things and moved out. That's true. He did not mention that and has taken half of our emergency fund with him uh, about nine days before I deliver our second child. Oh, really? That's just nice. No, he didn't mention that because I probably would have ripped him a new one for doing that. 
It's like if you're going to leave, you don't leave nine days before a baby comes, doob. Uh, you know, it, this didn't just suddenly happen. So, yeah, we would have, um, George and I would have teed off on him on that. Me more than George, but George, because George is generally nice. too nice. Uh, she closes with, I'm not stupid, I've not lost my mind, but backed into a corner with no other resources or choices. I think I can own this one. And that's after rationalizing again for five paragraphs that buying the van was a good idea. So let's go back and recoup, re- regroup on this whole thing for a little bit. Um, number one, I don't like it when any of you, none of us at Ramsey like it, when you take our good common sense advice that is meant for you to prosper in your family and you weaponize it to use it on your family or weaponize it to use it on your spouse. There's a thing in here where he says, she says, he, he refused any car I looked at because he, and, and he said, Dave always says, if the answer is no, we don't do anything. If, the answer, if we can't come into agreement, the answer is no. Well, that's a general principle, yes. But what's going on here is you two are a hot mess. That's what's really going on here. Both of you, Jessica, you with your rationalization, which I completely understand how you get there in the middle of him being a control freak and you getting ready to have a baby, and I get all of that, but you rationalized your butt off, girl. I mean, it's ridiculous. And and him with his lying to us and weaponizing advice that we give here and using it to verbally thrash his wife with, um, you you guys desperately needed marriage counseling a long time ago. Long time ago, yeah. uh, long before he calls on this radio show, and uh, we certainly did not tell him to pack up his stuff and move. And out. it sounds like he did and that. If you go back and listen to the call, nowhere did we even intimate that he should do that. We did tell him, "You guys need marriage counseling." And baby doll, you did need marriage counseling. You do need marriage counseling. It's a, it, you guys are a hot mess. You 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 bow up and just go do whatever the crap you want to do and go deeply in debt and buy a van that you shouldn't have. Uh, against his wishes, which indicates that you guys are not on the same page and have serious marriage problems, and he's being a twerp and a control freak and not coming up with some way to take care of his pregnant wife and kids and get her into a car that works. Well, to that end, uh, everybody this- wants what they want instead of being instead of serving each other in this marriage. She says, to quote him, I don't care if it has a welded five-gallon bucket for the front seat. You'll drive what I pick, or I won't agree to it. Because Dave says if you can't agree, you go with who says no. So See, I buy that, is that's not, that has never come out of here. I mean, we don't – that's just that's just completely weaponizing the advice here. So, yeah, Jessica, you have a mess. Your husband is a mess. You're in a mess. And you did a stupid thing in the middle of all that. And, and it hurt and, to have her laundry aired out, you know, yeah, on sure. national radio. Well, too. I don't blame her for that, sure. too. And I pick on a lady who's getting ready to have a baby in nine days. Oh, my gosh. So, uh, but the, the point is, guys, this is, if you can't get together on what to do with money, it's not a money problem. If you can't get together on what to do with your car, it's not a car problem. That's a marriage problem, and it's usually a selfishness problem. I mean, she was selfish because she just went and did whatever she wanted to do. He was selfish because he's like, I'm not going to agree to anything because I don't like it, and, I, and I'm on the road, and I'm going to hold all the power like he has any power, which apparently he didn't. So, uh, you know, it was just out of control. So the, the inverse of this is, hey, I love my wife, and I understand she's freaking out. i got to figure out some way to get her in a different car that is good for our future, and going further in debt is not good for our future, instead of, I'm going to tell you what to do, and Dave Ramsey, and the, oh, my God, you twerp. And they, they mentioned we didn't ask their income. They make $137,000. Yeah, and it paid off a bunch of debt, right? Yeah. How much was it? It was a lot. Uh, $50,000 in 15 months they paid off, she says. So, um, uh, what? You, but you didn't ask what we made, she said. Well, I didn't ask what you made because that wasn't the question. The question wasn't, it's a, not a, an income wasn't a math problem. It was my wife bought a car that we didn't agree to problem. That was the call. It wasn't like how much money you make. How much money you make doesn't solve, you know, you two not getting along. So you could make 237000 and still not, you still shouldn't go do that. And he still shouldn't put you in a position that you felt like that was the only thing you could do. So you two are being, you're a hot mess. You're a hot mess, and you need to be in marriage counseling, both of you. Bad. And, and so, because here's the thing. Sharon Ramsey goes and does that, I'm going to have a problem. But I'm also not going to put her in a position that she feels like that's her only way. And if she feels like that's her only way, then she's got a serious Cinderella syndrome, like she deserves it entitled and I'm arrogant and whatever. Then we got another issue going on, 
and we're going to be sitting down with with a professional and helping us guide through our relationship because apparently we can't guide through it ourselves. And we've done that. Ten year, you know, after we were married about ten years, we about killed each other that year. And so we, you know, marriage counselor saved our lives and our marriage, saved my life because she probably would have killed me in my sleep. But um, <laughs> but the uh, uh, but I mean, you know, and and so I can I distinctly remember driving the crappy. You remember, this is how bad it was. You you probably have seen these on the road. They're still out there. The two-tone blue Astro vans. Oh, yeah. You remember those? Yeah, those were real ugly. This is like the minivan of minivans. And it had like a bazillion miles on it. And I fried the transmission out of it, pulling the boat, because it wasn't designed to pull a boat. It was a lightweight little thing. And I put a new transmission in it. And this thing, I mean, it stunk. It had Cheerios like neck deep in it. Although we'd raised little babies in it and dogs. And it was a mess. And she was over this van. And rightly so. It was a piece of crap. And we were starting to make a little money. We finally got a little bit of money. And she's like, I want to get a Suburban. I want to get an SUV. I'm like, that's $20,000. Might as well be that gum $200,000. What do you mean? Well, you got $20,000 coming in down there at your company, our company. You keep telling me it's mine. I want some of the money out of there. Buy SUV. And I'm like, yeah, but that $20,000 we can use to invest in this thing we're working on, and it's going to make us 100000 If we buy this car for 20000 and we went back and forth, and I went, Ugh. And we just we kept arguing about it. Finally, I had this moment where I went, you know what? It's not an either or. It's a win. And I said, so, okay, we gonna, we need to do the investment at the company, and we need to buy the car. And which one which one we What's do first? Is, which one we do first is the only thing that mattered. And so we just put her first. She won. There we go. And you know what? When she won, I won. Boom. Isn't that interesting? Woo! Here's the takeaway from this story, Dave. They've got a child on the way, and right now they're both being children. We need less children in this family. How's that? Now you'll get another email, George. Uh-oh. Yeah. We changed her brand. <laughs> this is the Ramsey Show. <laughs>